Good evening and welcome to this evening's Development Management Committee meeting. I'm Joan Grime, Councillor for Culture, Glazebury and Croft, and I will be chairing the meeting. Due to the current coronavirus pandemic, the Council have taken steps to follow restrictions and health guidance in relation to social distancing, whilst balancing the needs of carrying out our regulatory functions. This is the second meeting of this committee that is being held remotely. The agenda for the meeting will run as per the usual format. The meeting is being broadcast live to the public who have had the opportunity to write written representations which have been distributed to members. However, there will be no input from the public actually during the meeting. All this is in line with the Coronavirus Act of 2020, Section 78. Present at the meeting are nine elected borough councillors plus officers of Warrington Borough Council. I will now ask all those present to introduce themselves. Will councillors also confirm that they have received the agenda and reports on the applications and have a copy in front of them. An update report has also been circulated and is available for members to view. So introductions, can you start Councillor Barr? Good evening, I'm Councillor Bob Barr. I represent Lim North from Thelwall and I have the agenda before me. Thank you Councillor Carey. Good evening, Chair. Um, Peter Carey representing Fairfield and Howley Ward. I confirm I've got the agenda and the other supporting emails that I received over the last few days. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Friend. Good evening. Yes, I'm Councillor Graham Friend representing Port North and I have the agenda in front of me. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Morgan. Councillor Morgan, are you uh, connected? Muted. Councillor Morgan. Now. Are we there now? Yes, we can hear you now. Councillor Les Morgan representing Latchford West. In front of me, I have all the papers relevant, agenda, etc. Thank you. Right, uh, Councillor Mundry. Councillor Karen Mundry, Latchford East. I confirm that you have the agenda and supporting documents in front of me. Thank you, Councillor Parrish. I'm Steve Parrish, I represent Chapelford and Old Hall and I have all the papers. Can I just ask whether we're supposed to be seeing pictures of people or just the Golden Gates? Um, at the moment you've got the Golden Gates and that will be replaced by the relevant part of the um, the application reports uh, okay. when we come up to the um, to the particular item ju just as last time. Thank you. Councillor Wheeler. Hello, I'm Councillor Judith Wheeler representing Appleton, Hatton, Stretton and Higher Walton. Confirm that I've got the agenda, I've read it and all the supporting documentation that's been sent through. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Uh, Councillor Wright, Steve Wright representing Busey and White Cross. I've got all the papers in front of me in the agenda. Thank you. I will also ask the officers present at the meeting to introduce themselves. We have officers from Democratic Services. Jenny Cordwell from Democratic Services. Thank you, Legal Services. Uh, thank you, Chair. Paul Clisby, um, Solicitor from the Legal Department. From Planning. Nikki Gallagher, Development Manager. Thank you. From Transport. Mike Taylor, House Development Control. Thank you. And uh, Director of Growth. Thank you, Chair. I'm Steve Park. I'm the Director of Growth at Warrington Borough Council. Thank you. Um, let's go on to the agenda. Item one, apologies. Jenny, do we have any apologies? Uh, yes, we have apologies from Councillor Tony McCarthy and Councillor Brian Marr. Thank you. 
Um, item two, declarations of interest. Members are reminded of their responsibility to declare any disclosable pecuniary or non-pecuniary interest which they have in any item of business on the agenda no later than when the item is reached. Um, I will ask members individually if they have any items to disclose. Councillor Barr. I have no items to disclose. Thank you. Councillor Carey. No items to disclose. Thank you, Councillor Friend. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, item six on the agenda is in my ward. Um, I've received, um, had a lot of discussion with uh, my residents within the ward and I've tried to answer them factually and at no point have I stated an opinion on whether I'm for or against the matter. Uh, the other thing on that in that agenda where on page 109 and which is page 117 electronically it says councillor friend objects that should read councillor diana friend and it was not myself that objected thank you chair thank you that's uh, important thank you for pointing that out um councillor morgan I've no uh, interest in uh, any of the items uh, on the agenda, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Mundry? No items to di disclose. Thank you, Councillor Parrish? Yes, Chair, on item one, paying close. Um, I don't think I've predetermined it, but I was at the Parish Council meeting, which decided to put in an objection. Uh, so I think I'd uh, be advised to um, not take part. I'm not quite sure I can leave a virtual room because I wouldn't know when to come back in, but uh, I'll not take part in item one. Right. Um, we've um, confirmed that you can leave the meeting by just muting your mic and the video for the duration of the item and have no involvement with the discussion. Um, so you will actually yeah know when to come back in without any problems. It's been confirmed that that's um, that's OK. Um, Councillor Weaver. Can I just uh, comment Sorry. on that? Certainly. Chair, can I? Paul. Yeah, um, yeah so, uh, that's uh, that's absolutely fine and that does that does work. Uh, it is a statutory requirement for uh, someone with a pecuniary interest to leave the room, um, as as you say. Um, however, in this particular case, Councillor Parrish is not declaring a pecuniary interest, merely that he has uh, been involved in the matter and uh, is uh, is choosing not to take part because he's 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 been involved previously at the parish council uh, stage. Uh, so, it, uh, in those circumstances, he would be entitled to to stay in the room, um, but clearly, if he's not to take part in the discussion. Thank you. Councillor Wright. Sorry, Councillor Wheeler, I beg your pardon. Councillor Wheeler, have you any um, declarations to make? Sorry, thought I was unmuted. Um, can you hear me, Chair? Yes. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, item two, um, Field of Tarpley Road, Stretton. It's in my ward. I was aware of the Parish Council objection, but I've not um, made any comments or been involved with this application. Thank you. Councillor Wright? No declarations to make, Councillor. OK, thank right. you. Um, I also have a declaration. The Limes, item four, Three, the Limes, Culture and Glazebury is in my ward and I'm on Culture and Glazebury Parish Council, but I've always left the Parish Council meeting when items of planning have been discussed and I've had no previous involvement in this issue at all. Um, can I ask um, Paul Clisby to confirm that we've got no problems with any of those declarations? Paul? Uh, they're all fine, Chair. OK, thank you very much. Right, item three on the agenda, the minutes of the last meeting. Um, has any member seen any problems with the minutes of the meeting on the 6th of May, which have been circulated to you? Has anyone got any problems? 
with those. Okay, I confirm then that the minutes of the DMC meeting held on the 6th of May 2020 are a correct record. And we go on to item four, the planning applications. So the first application, that's number 2019, 35202. Land at 115 Payne Close, Warrington, WA5 1DU. This application is the construction of a new dwelling. Can I invite the development manager to present a report? Thank you, Chair. The application proposes a two bedroom bungalow within the existing side curtilage of number 115 Payne Close with access taken from Grange Farm Close. It will be attached to the host property and orientated in the same way. It will be smaller in height than the host property, but wider than it. A driveway is proposed to the side off Grange Farm Close with separate bin store that will be screened from the highway by a new hedge set back from the visibility splay. Number 115 Payne Close cannot currently be accessed from Grange Farm Close. The application is before DMC because Great Sankey Parish Council has objected to the proposal on the basis of character, overdevelopment and highway safety. The application has been publicised by neighbour notification letter and site notice. Nine representations were received as a result and the objections received are summarised in detail in section four of your report, although these primarily associated with design and character, highway safety and residential amenity. Two additional representations have been submitted since the publication of the report and these have been summarised and responded to within the update notes circulated to members earlier today. The local plan policies against which the application should be assessed are contained within section 7 of your report for information. The primary issues associated with development are its principal, its character, amenity and highway safety and I'll look at each of these in turn. The application is for residential use within an area defined primarily by its residential nature. It is therefore acceptable in principle, subject to other plan policies. Members will be aware that currently Warrington is unable to demonstrate a five year housing land supply as required by the National Planning Policy Framework. This is material in considering the proposal and should be attributed weight, particularly given that it is considered the application site is in a sustainable location. Whilst it is recognised that the site is Greenfield, being a side garden to a residential property, the approval of this would not undermine the Council's wider objectives for the majority of new housing to be built in, on Brownfield sites because of the minor nature of the development. Given that similar uses are established in the vicinity and the application proposal would make a positive contribution to the Council's five year housing land supply, albeit small, it is considered acceptable in principle. The proposed development is clearly different from the surrounding houses in Payne Close and Grange Farm Close. It is a bungalow and therefore is of a different scale and footprint as shown visually in section 12 of your report. The characteristics of Payne Close and Grange Farm Close differ and the application property has been carefully designed to respond to the positive characteristics of both streets in which it would have a presence with a tile and brick construction. Whilst the proposal will be forward of the building line established by adjacent houses, its single storey nature would mean it would not have a dominant impact on the street scene. Whilst, as will be discussed in relation to highways, the existing hedging would be removed from the current back of the highway on Grange Farm Close, the amended plan, an amended plan has been submitted to ensure that replacement hedging can be facilitated. A condition to ensure that this happens is not currently provided for within the recommendation in your report, however it has been detailed within the update notes circulated to members earlier today. Details associated with amenity and specifically interface distances are detailed at length in the report. In summary, taking into account site account site and proposed property characteristics, there would be no significant detrimental impact in amenity as a result of the proposal. One of the most significant concerns for local residents appears to be access onto Grange Farm Close and associated safety considerations. For clarity, the hedge that would be removed to facilitate this proposal is within, the is within highway land. Its removal would not provide for a visibility, sorry, its removal would not only provide for a visibility display for the new property, but would also accommodate a new footway. This land was originally intended to be maintained as a grass highway verge and it is understood that the hedge comprises various bush um, plant types which are likely self-seeded. Two, the two metre wide replacement footpath would create a new pedestrian link between Payne Crook Close and Grange Farm Close. There is currently no existing pedestrian link. This is considered positively in terms of accessibility and sustainability. The proposal allows for off-street car parking to meet the needs of the development and, is important to, and it is important to note that the same parking layout could be implemented by 115 Payne Close currently under permitted development rights and therefore without express consent. 
highway safety would not be unduly impeded by the proposed development. Taking into account all material considerations, including those raised by local residents as detailed within your report, it is considered that the application adheres to policies contained within the local plan and is therefore recommended for approval subject to conditions, including that additional regarding replacement hedgerow set out within your update note. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that. Um, I can confirm that we've received two written representations. These are an objection from Mr and Mrs Webb and an objection from Linda McCurry. Um, I will now ask members to confirm that they have read and understood these two representations. I will go through us in alphabetical order. In readiness, can you all unmute your mics and if possible, just give me a one word answer so we can uh, get through quickly. Councillor Barr. Uh, I have not seen the representations. You've not seen the representations. Um, so. I think um, we need to discuss with um, Paul Clisby from Legal um, whether this means that um, Councillor Barr will be able to take part in the discussion. Or whether No, uh, well, um, no, Councillor Barr needs obviously needs to um, have read the representations to uh, in order to have all the information to, to hand. I don't know if there's got the opportunity to do that now. Uh, yes, I'd like that. I, I, I've got today's update report, but the representations don't appear to be in that. No, they came out on Tuesday evening about eight or nine o'clock. <coughs> That's fine. I'll double check that. Thank you. I think um, obviously there will be some slight difficulty because there are quite a substantial number of representations, aren't there? Yes, every yeah. um, every item has um, of representations which need to have been read. Um, so I think if we give you a couple of minutes to read these now, Bob, the first two for um, this particular item because they um, are quite short and then perhaps you can try and read the others on um, a point during the meeting when, when there are, are gaps. Is this possible, Bob? <coughs> Councillor Barr. Councillor Barr, are you uh, with us? Sorry. I think, I think I Councillor have, Barr. I, ha I have now the found the additional materials. I'd seen the visual material, I hadn't seen the written representations, but I will take a look at them now. Okay. Um, I will go through the rest of the members of the committee and um, hope you can uh, do them quite quickly. So I'm um, now going to ask the others, have they read and understood the two representations? Councillor Carey. Yes, Chair, I confirm. Thank you. Councillor Friend. Yes, Chair, and I confirm. That's good. Councillor Morgan. Yes, Chair, confirm. OK, Councillor Mundry. Yes, Chair, I confirm. Right, Councillor Parrish. I'm not taking part, Chair. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. You said that a few minutes ago now. Councillor Wheeler. Councillor Wheeler, are you with us? Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can now. Sorry. Yes, I thought I was unmuted. Yes, I can confirm I've seen them. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Wright. Yes, Chair, confirm. Thank you. And I have also read the representations. Um, I will also confirm that these representations will be included in the minutes of this meeting. Um, we'll now um, ask uh, Councillor Barr 
if he's had time to have a look at the representations, they were two quite short accounts. Are you back with us, Councillor Barr? I, I am with you, thank you. And ha have you had a chance to yes, read? Yes, I have. The thank you, well done, that's quick reading, good. Are you happy that you've had time to understand what's, uh, what's happening? Yes, I have, thank you. Okay, um, I'll go through members of the committee now and invite questions from members to the officers or comments that you wish to make. Um, to give Councillor Barr time to take a breath, I'll start with Councillor Carey. Have you got any questions, Councillor? No, no Carey. questions or comments, Chair. No questions or comments, thank you. Councillor Friend. Uh, I just had one question, Chair. The reason we're looking at this is because the Parish Council objected I thought we had changed the rules and that that wasn't sufficient reason to bring an item to committee. Um, I think, although I'll ask um, Nikki to confirm this, I think that these applications all came in before the rule was changed. Yes, and this is a 2009 to previous mm -hmm. ones. They're is hangovers. That correct, Nikki? Council, okay. this, this particular Fine. application, the, the change in the delegations from last committee related to um, parish council objections to household developments, and this is a full planning permission for a new house, and that's why it's before members. All right, thank you. I hadn't realised that, so that was well worth the question. Thank you. Um, thank any you, Chair. Questions? No further questions. No further okay. questions. Any questions from Councillor Morgan? No questions, Chair. OK, from Councillor Mundry. No questions or comments, Chair. All right, Councillor Wheeler. Uh, I've got comments, Chair, not questions. Yeah. Um, I probably broke all the rules and I actually did go and look at this because I just couldn't get my head around it on Google Maps. So I went in the car and you can't actually access near the front of the property because it's pedestrianised. So I sat in the car and looked. Um, my comments are that this estate has a lot of greenery um, for a dense development there is a lot of greenery there and I think the building of a bungalow adjacent to 115 Payne Close has an impact on the greenery an impact on the openness of the estate and I also think it's totally out of keeping I couldn't see any other bungalows on Payne Close and I just think it will look very odd so that's um, those are my comments, Chair. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments from Councillor Wright? Uh, I had concerns about forming a new access across the uh, Lantham Grange farm into Payne Close. And I know there's been some discussion around that. Um, um, you know, it just yeah. seems, Do you yeah. want officers to make a comment yeah. on, yeah, on that? What, transport or um, planning? Uh, both, I think. OK. Um, Nikki, have you got uh, any comments made about the um, about the link? I know it was appeared in the notes as possibly an advantage, but a few people have expressed concerns about it. Yeah. So I'll yes. ask you if you've got any comments, Nikki. Yes. So the, uh, currently there is no access link, no pedestrian access or vehicle access link for that matter between Grange Farm Close and Payne Close. Now, the un, un, as part of this application, it is proposed that a new footpath will um, run parallel to the highway on Grange Farm Close. There is no footpath there, no footpath adjacent to the highway at the moment. And what that does is give the opportunity to link one of the footpaths, which you can see they're actually on your screen quite clearly. Um, it goes towards the back of the properties on Payne Close, um, labelled from 109 at the moment. It will give the opportunity to bring that footpath to give that footpath a clear destination and it could come out on great on Grange Farm close. Now, from a planning perspective, we can, we can see the advantages to this in terms of sustainability and accessibility. So if you live on Payne Close, for example, and you want to go and visit somebody in Grange Farm close or vice versa, there is a more direct route. Um, it isn't necessary to facilitate the development, but it has been agreed by the by the applicant that they are willing to do that um, and it can be um, made to adoptable standards and adopted by the council. There is no there's no through route through the um, 
for public through route through the application site for, for the public. So it's just addition, additional access that we're talking about here. Thank you. Um, right, Councillor Barr, have you got any questions or comments? Only a comment, uh, which is that I agree with Councillor Wheeler that there is a, a, a lot of green space and greenery in this area. I'm usually against garden grabbing, uh, but this is uh, a, a very clearly vacant site rather than, than a garden. And I, I would put some weight by the footpath that will be become available uh, as a result of the development. Uh, so, uh, I, I wouldn't have any objections to this. Thank you. Um, does any councillor wish to come back with further comments or questions as a result of uh, the discussion we've just had? No. Um, are there any further points of clarification from officers? No, thank you, Councillor. All right. Um, looking at the discussion, I think that um, I can therefore propose the motion that the application is approved. Um, I will go through the councillors and ask if anyone wants to second the motion. Councillor Barr. Uh, I prefer not to second the motion. OK, uh, Councillor Carey. Yes, Chair, I'll second the motion. OK, the motion is proposed and seconded. Are there any amendments to the motion from any councillors? No. All right, can I then hand over to the Democratic Services Officer to take the vote and give us the result? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Barr? Four. Uh, Councillor Carey? Four. Uh, Councillor Friend? Four. Councillor Morgan? Four. Councillor Mundry? Four. Councillor Parrish? No, it's not taking part. Sorry, let me see. Sorry, Chair. Uh, Councillor Wheeler? Councillor Wheeler? Three. Against. Against, thank okay. you. Uh, Councillor Wright? Four. And me? And Councillor Graham? Four. That's seven, four, so the application is approved. Thank you. Um, so that's the first application approved. If we go on to item two on the list of uh, applications, that is 2019 35515. That is a field of Tarpley Road, Stretton, Warrington, WA44LZ. The application is for the retention of hard standing and construction of an agricultural building in connection with existing agricultural use. Can I invite the development manager to present um, the report? Thank you, Chair. The application has resulted from an enforcement inquiry and seeks the retention of hard standing and erection of an ag agricultural building relating to an agricultural use. The proposed building would be nine metres in length with a maximum height of 3.5 metres. It would be used as a store for animal food, equipment and plant. There would be no construction until the existing unauthorised porter cabin has been removed from the site as required by condition and the area of hard standing that seeks regularisation is smaller than that which has been laid, a reduction of 130 square metres which is over one third. The site is in agricultural use and is located within the green belt. The application is before members due to an objection received from Stretton Parish Council. The main planning issues raised are that the development is unauthorised and the green belt should not be developed in this way. There is also concern regarding the scale of development on what is considered to be a small plot about the impact of the generator on residential amenity and the implications for highway safety. In addition, three letters from residents have been received and the issues raised are largely reflected of those from the Parish Council. 
The site history is set out in section six of your report. There have clearly been, been planning breaches on the site in the past and the applicants have sought to address these through the appeal process associated with an enforcement notice, which has not been successful and has led to the application that is currently in front of members, which proposes a reduced amount of development. Members will be aware that we need to consider the planning merits of this case only and not the enforcement history which has led to its application. All planning applications must be determined in accordance with local planning policies unless other material considerations indicate otherwise. The relevant planning policies are contained within the core strategy and are listed within section 7 of your, of your report. The key issues associated with the development are the principle of the development in green belt, design and character, residential immunity and highway safety and I'll take each of these in turn. The application site is green belt land and the development in green belt should only be allowed in very special circumstances. In accordance with national planning policy framework, an appropriate exception is buildings for agriculture. The site is in agricultural use, housing chickens and pigs, and the proposed building would serve this use. The retained hard standing would allow the servicing of the building. The building is considered appropriate in the green belt in terms of scale, design and character, and the area of retained hard standing is considered proportionate for the servicing requirements. On this basis, the development is considered to accord with local and national policy and is acceptable in principle. The application site is, is a significant distance away from the nearest residential properties, which are in excess of 110 metres away. That said, it is recognised that Partridge Public House also has a residential element, but this too is approximately 100 metres away. Environmental protection have considered the proposal having regard to the details of the scheme, including the internal housing of the generator and the distance of the nearest residential properties, and consider there will be no detrimental impact as a result. It is considered that on balance, on the balance of probability, that the access to the site was implemented some time ago, likely to be prior to 2009. The proposed retained hard, hard standing area utilises this access for servicing, and the proposal would not generate significant levels of traffic. Whilst improvements could be made to the visibility from the site entrance, this would result in the removal of hedgerow, and in any case would not be considered would be considered unreasonable in relation to the current application, considering that the entrance is lawful. There are benefits to the retained hard standing for the adjacent highway in that it would reduce the mud from vehicles exiting the site, which would otherwise occur with the continued agricultural use in the absence of any hard standing. In conclusion then, for the reasons set out here, it is considered that the application conforms with national and local planning policy and is therefore recommended for approval subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Nikki. Um, I can confirm that we've received two written representations. There is an objection from Stretton Parish Council and also a letter of support from Nick Basley on behalf of the applicants. I'm now going to ask members to confirm that they have read and understood these representations. I will start with Councillor Carey again. Uh, yes, Chair, I confirm. Thank you, Councillor Friend. I confirm, Chair. Yep, Councillor Morgan. I confirm, Chair. Councillor Mundry. I confirm, Chair. Councillor Parrish. Yes, Chair, I confirm. Thank you, Councillor Wheeler. Uh, I confirm, Chair. Councillor Wright. Confirm, Chair. And I also have read the representations. Uh, Councillor Barr, have you had time to? Yes, I have. Thank you. Good. Um, um, I also confirm that these representations will be included in the minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. I will now ask um, if uh, members have any questions that or comments that they need to make to officers. Uh, Councillor Barr, have you got any questions or comments? Uh, I, I have a comment. I, I can understand Stratton Parish Council's very strong objection here because you don't want to be seen to be rewarding uh, unlawful development by then passing uh, uh, a, a, future, a future application which is regarded by Stratton Parish Council as being for the same thing. And my view is we are where we are. The application before us will improve the quality of the site and and, uh, 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 and, and of the land and whilst I can understand why residents will be extremely cross and there are other circumstances where this has happened uh, I think this application uh, should go through. Thank you. Um, Councillor Carey have you got any questions or comments? Yes Chair I'd like to um, 
comment on the schedule of conditions on page 36. Um, the fourth condition um, refers to retail sales within the building. I would like to see that expanded to say um, to within the site, the whole site rather than just the building, so that there would be no retail sales at all. Um, the second point is with regard to residential uh, occupation of the site, I would like to see an additional condition which prohibits, specifically prohibits any form of residential occupation of the site, if that's possible. Thank you. Um, Nikki, have you got any comments um, from planning on um, Councillor Carey's uh, questions on comments? Yep, so there was, there was two things there, Council. Firstly was the retail element, which I'm just looking into here. Um, the, we could only condition um, land that is within the red line boundary or, or blue line associated with, with the site. Um, what I could say is I can look into that further. I'll need to check the application fine in a little bit more detail. If it is within the red line or the blue line, we will be able to do that. Right, thank you. OK, and the... Um residential the residential and the residential so remove permitted development rights for residential for future residential use that's fine yeah that's fine yeah okay yes so we'll definitely add that condition unless anyone has any objections in yes. future yes, sir, uh, discussion as the, as the parish does. <laughs> <laughs> um councillor <laughs> councillor morgan have you got any questions or comments Well, this is not back with us yet. Um, can I go back to um, Councillor Friend? Have you got any um, comments or questions on the um, application? Did you hear that? Not at this time, thank you. All right, I didn't. I've only just heard it. Thank you. Thanks for that. OK, Councillor Morgan, are you with us? I'm with you, yes. Right. Have you got any questions or comments? Um, the only comment I have, no questions uh, apart from I agree with uh, Councillor Carey that uh, we, we should try and make those inclusions to the conditions that is mentioned. OK, thank you. Um, Councillor Mundry. No questions or comments, Chair. All right, thank you. Councillor Parrish. Yes, Chair, I'm, I'm not so sure about the new conditions or the change to the conditions. Uh, can I ask whether it would need a planning application to allow retail sales on the site and uh, would it need a planning application for any residential premises on the site the only thing i might be concerned of will be I remember one case a long time ago where somebody uh, applied for a barn it was obvious the windows in the barn would have made it a nice conversion to a house but i can't see this building being converted to a house so can i ask whether these extra conditions are actually strictly necessary and if they're not necessary is there any point to them OK, I will pass that to um, to Nikki fairly soon, but I would like to comment that one of the problems with this site has been that there was um, a caravan on it, I think. I think that's been one of the enforcement issues. Please correct me if I'm uh, if I'm wrong. So I can't see any harm in adding those conditions. But uh, Nikki, can I ask if you have any comments from planning? Just in terms of the retail element to if it was to be a shop on site, so a, a use in itself that would require planning permission. So that would and that's not being included in here. So that's not what they're proposing. But the ancillary retail um, can would normally be de minimis. So that's if you look at paragraph 9.21 in your report, that is what they're doing at the moment. So they've got a small store there at the moment selling um, what seems to be eggs. Um, so just things that they are producing on site, they are selling on site at the moment um, to passers by, passing trade. We we can limit that by use of condition, but we would need we will need a reason for that. Um, and I think that would be that will be important. So should it be challenged further on? Thank you. Um, so can I come back, Chair, on 
Yes, by all means. I mean, just thinking the normal rules for conditions which have to be necessary and uh, I'm not quite sure what the reason will be for not allowing, for instance, sale of eggs um, on the site. It's an agricultural site. It's a, you know, the normal sort of thing you'd expect to be able to pop into a farm and say you've got some eggs, although it's not what they, I think they're going. Can, can actually we ask um, Mike Taylor to uh, comment from Transport about the um, width of the lane and uh, anything that seems relevant to that question, Mike? Th thanks, Chair. Um, what I would say is, is from when we looked at the, the, the from a highways point of view, uh, the highways comments are dealt with on, on page uh, 33 through to 35 of your report. And we did ask for improvements to visibility to the, the access point because it was considered that although there's an, an existing agricultural access there, um, this proposal may increase the movements out of that because we, we typically would assume that agricultural accesses are used seasonally. Um, and the level of that use does depend on what's on, on, the, on the ground. Now, obviously, there, there are planning issues in relation to the existing use that's there now and the existence of an access point. And on in paragraph 918 of, of your report, uh, sorry, 917 and 918, that, that details the reasons why it was unreasonable for us to ask for, for some sort of improvement to the access. In respect of Hall Lane, it's it's a it's a narrow country lane that doesn't lead anywhere to stub end and um, the existing approach and, and exit um, from the A49 is protected by double yellow lines to prevent um, parking on there. Um, and so other than that, we've made no, no comments. OK, thank you. Um, can we um Go on through um, to Councillor Wheeler. Have you got any comments to make Thank either you, on the application or comments that have been made already? Thank you, Chair. No, I support um, Councillor Carey's uh, comments about um, moving permitted development rights for residential. Um, what concerned me, but Nikki has answered that it's not part of the planning application, is this land is fenced off by extremely high, ugly fencing, which is totally out of keeping with the area, totally out of keeping with an agricultural use. Um, you cannot see into this site. Um, and I've got concerns about that, but I think Nikki explained to me that um, it's not part of the application, but you wouldn't know what on earth was going on behind these high fences and corrugate, corrugated sheeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Wright. I can hear a beeping. Can everybody else hear that beeping sound? Yeah, I've been searching my room as well. I don't know what it is though. Thank you. Okay. I think it might be me. Excuse me. Okay. Um, I sort of agree with what uh, Councillor Carey said regarding the, um, the residence on the site, uh, and I was I was uh, edging towards the um, restriction of any sales, retail sales. But like you said, there's, there's already a little bit of um, selling goes on there now. Um, but I, I would support the prohibition of any form of residential development if that was a, if we could condition that. OK, thank you. Can we uh, go around again? Because we've had quite a bit of um, discussion and people may have further comments to make. Councillor Barr. Uh, I welcome Councillor Carey's suggestion on residential. Uh, uh, if Nikki could clarify for me, uh, because you mentioned uh, withholding permitted development rights. Uh, would there be a permitted development right for residential that was deemed essential for the agricultural activity taking place on the site if we didn't uh, condition it? There would be, yes. So there is, um, there is you can convert um, agricultural dwellings into um, um, units. For, for workers without planning permission in certain circumstances. I think in this particular instance, that condition hasn't been included just because the scale of development wouldn't seem to lend itself for those purposes. But we're not withstanding that. If that was members' concerns, we can't add a condition on of that nature. 
Uh, can I uh, have a, a secondary on, on that? Uh, yes. uh, you say it's the, the concern about the conversion of the specific building. Uh, do permitted development rights, if the activity within the building was then deemed to require an on-site presence, would that uh, enable someone to have permitted development rights to place a caravan or to place a small uh, building uh, that could be uh, occupied on the site. So not the not the building we're talking about here, but somewhere within the blue curtilage. So it would still need to come through the planning process, planning system. It wouldn't be permitted development. Right. Uh, yeah. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Carey, any further comments? Um, I don't think so, Chair. Um, the um, the point about the residential, I think, is obvious. Um, it doesn't have to be a building. It can be a caravan or uh, anything else. Um, the point about the sales, um, I was just trying to prevent an issue developing in the future where the sales became the predominant activity on the site. So that was the, the purpose in suggesting that one. Thank you. Um, any further comments or questions from uh, Councillor Friend? No, thank you, Chair. OK, Councillor Morgan. Nothing further, Chair. Right, Councillor Mundry. Nothing further, Chair. Councillor Parrish. Oh, I'm not quite sure now what the amendments were because condition four does uh, ban anything, does allow ancillary use, but wouldn't allow a main use for retail. And there are no permitted development rights for residential, either anything else or even converting this building, which seems unlikely. So I'm still not sure what the point of extra conditions would be. Chair, if I could come in there, yes. I'm simply giving clarity to what we are allowing so that if anything does develop that's not allowed, the officers can move in on, on um, stopping the, the matter without coming back to committee. It would be enforcement that would be yeah. engaged. OK, thank you. And um, Councillor Wheeler. No, um, no further comments, Chair. Councillor Wright. No further comments. OK, thank you. Do we need any more clarification from officers? Um, Councillor, I'm happy just to clarify that the, any additional retail, so the ancillary retail at the, at the moment that is taking part on, on site is um, considered very much de minimis, so, so ancillary to its use, so wouldn't need planning consent. If over time that was to change into something else, which is a Councillor Curry's concern, well then we would be in a position where we'd be, we'd be looking to pursue that as an issue. If it, if it was no longer considered de minimis, um, but the, this application does not um, does not seek retail. OK, Chair, I, I'm prepared to accept that um, that amendment should be left aside. All right. Um, are there um, any comments from um, Paul Clisby from, from Legal about um, adding the other um, um, uh, other condition that um, Councillor Carey mentioned for removing um, Permitted development rights. Sorry, was that right, uh, Councillor Carey? Yes, Chair. Yeah. Any comments from um, Mr. Clisby? Yeah. yeah, all I would say is that uh, in of, in terms of the principle of the matter, uh, all conditions are required to be necessary, necessary and reasonable uh, before they can be imposed. Um, I think uh, my understanding is that. Uh, Mrs Gallagher has, uh, has explained that, uh, that, that, that in these circumstances, the removal of permitted development rights would be uh, reasonable and necessary for the objective of uh, preventing a, a residential use from arising, which is uh, not desirable uh, at the location without a planning application. Chair, sure. can I ask what the permitted development rights are that we would be removing? Um. Certainly, uh, you can ask that, Steve. Can um, Nikki make uh, an answer? 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. So it will be the permitted development rights that relate to the um, the conversion of agricultural buildings into residential um, areas. And we'd, we'd obviously check the act for the correct word and the precise wording of that. And what I'm suggest what I would suggest is that the, the precise wording of the act is reflected within condition two. Condition two, as it's written at the moment, says the building associated hard stand hereby approved shall be used for agricultural purposes only throughout the lifetime of the development. But we will clarify that with reference to um, the the uh, the um, development order to make sure that it's all tied in legally. Can I just add what just add one point? Um, Certainly. I, I mean, I haven't studied the uh, the position in detail, but there there is an enforcement notice uh, in place here, uh, and so long as a planning permission does not supersede that, um, then potentially elements of that will remain in situ. Um, so, for example, I think there, the no, there is a notice in force which says that they cease the, cease the use of the land for residential purposes. Um, and that uh, notice doesn't necessarily go away. Um, so there is some additional protection potentially. Right, thank you. Um, does anyone want to make any further comments before we uh, move to a proposal? OK, um, Councillor Carey, would, would you like to propose a motion? Yes, Chair, I propose um, approval of the application as set out in the report with the additional condition relating to residential occupation of the site. Thank you. Have I got a seconder for that? Um... Councillor Friend will second that. Thank you. Um, does anyone want to make an, any amendment? Right, so I will hand over to the Democratic Services Officer to take the vote and state the result. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Barr? Four. Councillor Carey? Four. Councillor Friend? Four. Councillor Grime? Four. Councillor Morgan? Four. Councillor Mundry? Four. Councillor Parrish? Yeah, four. Councillor Wheeler? Sorry. Wheeler? Sorry, abstain. Thank you. Councillor Wright? Four. Four. Uh, the application is approved with the additional condition. Right, thank you. Um, so that's item two approved. Um, we go on to item three, which is 2019 35681. Land on the corner of Church Lane and Chester Road, Grappen Hall, Warrington. The sighting of two former shipping containers for agricultural storage purposes, the erection of a polytunnel for the propagation of non-hardy trees and the relocation of the existing agricultural access. Can I invite the development manager to present um, the report? Thank you, Chair. The application proposes the sighting of two former um, two timber clad shipping containers, the erection of the polytunnel and the relocation of existing vehicle access in connection with its agricultural use. It is intended that the site will be used as a tree nursery and planning permission is not required for this use. The shipping containers will be a standard six metre length and the polytunnel will be 12.8 metres long by 8.5 metres wide and a maximum of three metres in height with a conventional design. The site forms part of a larger field on the periphery of Grappen Hall Village. The field is currently mainly fallow and there is no previous planning history relating to its use or, or structures. There is currently an existing vehicle access onto Church Road. And the site is within Greenbelt and in the Grappen Hall conservation area. The application is before members due to a member calling and parish council objection. Councillor Ryan Bate requested the application be referred to DMC because the site is within the conservation area and it is recognised within the parish council's village design statement as being inappropriate. Grappen Hall and Thelwall Parish Council have objected for numerous reasons stated within paragraph 4.2 of the report, including the principle in the 
of the development in Greenbelt and in the conservation area and the principle of retail. They also consider that there are design elements of the, st of the structures, a detrimental increase in traffic and environmental concerns, including oil, air, noise and air pollution. The application was publicised by 27 neighbour notification letters, a site notice and a press notice. 31 objections were received as a result, and these are detailed for your information within paragraph 4.3 of your report. It should also be noted, noted that 13 representations have been received in support of the application, and these are detailed within paragraph 4.4. Amended plans led to reconsultation and representations received and associated with this are in paragraph 4.5. All plan applications must be determined in accordance with local plan policies unless other material considerations indicate otherwise. The relevant local planning policies contained within the core strategy are, contained, are detailed within section 7 of the report. And the key issues in relation to this plan application are the principle of the development of the green belt, the impact of, the, of design and character on the conservation area, residential immunity and highway safety. And I'll take each one of these in turn. As detailed in paragraph 9.2 of the report, the planning definition of agriculture includes nursery grounds and therefore there is no material change in the use of the land. It is therefore necessary to consider whether proposed structures and relocated access are acceptable in principle. As ascertained in the discussion of our previous item this evening, the erection of structures in connection with agricultural use as proposed in this application are not, in, not considered to be inappropriate in the green, in green belt policy terms. In considering the application, there is a requirement to consider the impact on the character and appearance of the Grappinall Village Conservation Area and specifically to pay special attention to preserving or enhancing the appearance of that area. In this instance, it is considered that the scale of the structures are proportionate to the agricultural holding and the appearance of the building would not be out of keeping. Whilst the shipping containers are not traditional in this location, they will be dressed appropriately with timber cladding to respect their environment and will not look incongruous. In any case, all structures are proposed to be screened by trees and the associated landscaping scheme, similar to that for the cladding of the quarter cabins, would be secured by condition. The Council's Heritage Officer has been, con officer has been consulted in on this application and it is considered that the scale and nature of the proposed build development would not impact on the character of the site as a buffer, buffer between the semi-rural Grappen Hall village and the denser urban area to the north of the canal and Chester Road. The proposal would have a neutral effect on the conservation area. Due to the site and the height of the proposed structures and the distance between them and the closest residential properties, it is considered that there will be no harmful physical impacts. The movements associated with the site are considered to be comparable with any normal agricultural movements and are unlikely to harm the immunity of the immediate neighbours or wider village, nor have a detrimental impact on highway safety. The relocation of the site access is welcome in enabling increased visibility when egressing the site and provides improvements to the current arrangements. While, while it will necessitate some limited removal of hedgerow, this has been minimised in the amended plans received. The application proposes structures that are ancillary to the agricultural use of the land and will facilitate a sustainable tree nursery. The proposal is acceptable in greenbelt terms and can be delivered without harm fully impacting upon the character of the area or residential amenity and the access solution provides benefits over the current location. On this basis the application accords with local plan policies and is recommended for approval subject to conditions as included within the report with amendments as detailed within your update report. This is to approve details of the polytunnel and materials for the cladding of the storage containers with the removal of condition four in the report, which has been superseded by condition nine. Both of those conditions relate to the treatment of the containers. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I confirm that we've received um, five representations from members of the public and parish councils. We have an objection from Mr. and Mrs. Champ, an objection from Mr. Julian Stowe, an objection from Grappenall and Fellwall Parish Council, an objection from Mr. and Mrs. Thompson, and, and support from the applicant, Mr. and Mrs. Cummings. Um, I'll ask members to confirm that they have read and understood these five representations. Um, can I start with Councillor Carey? Yes, Chair, I confirm. Friend? Confirm. Sorry, Councillor Friend. Councillor Morgan? Confirm. Councillor Mundry? Confirm. Councillor Parrish? Confirm. Councillor Wheeler? Confirm. Councillor Wright? Confirm. Councillor Barr? Confirm. And I've read them uh, as well. And I confirm that these representations 
will be included in the minutes. Um, can I now ask if members have any questions to ask officers or any comments to make? I'll ask you again in, um, in order. I'll start this time with Councillor Friend. Have you None any this comments? Time, yeah. Pardon? None at this time, Chair. None at this time, right, thank you. Councillor Morgan? No, Chair. Okay, Councillor Mundry? No questions or comments, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Parrish? Uh, just a query whether the uh, the only applica the application which actually needs planning consent is the new entrance because containers and polytunnels up to three metres seem to be permitted development. Can you answer that, um, Nikki? Yeah, the, um, as part of the application, so the application, as you, as you realise from the report, originally came in with elements that weren't that were subsequently considered to be permitted, such as the um, the use of the land for, as a nursery, and all elements have been assessed. And in this particular case, it is considered that these elements do need permission. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments from Councillor Wheeler? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, there is no mention in the report that these um, baby trees will be sold on the site and I've got no reason to think they were. If there was an increase in traffic for the sale, um, there are um, definitely highways concerns because this is a, a busy narrow road on a bend. Um, is, it, is it feasible to impose a condition restricting any retail sale on the site or does that require another planning uh, application? Um, do any officers want to comment on that? Yeah, so again, it's, it's quite similar from item two in, in that regard, insofar as they could um, lawfully have an element of retail, but it would need to be de, de minimis. So that's small as to, know, as to as not to not require planning permission. And the minute they start moving into something more substantial um, in terms of the retail sales is the point that we would need to get, we would need to be involved again, or they would need to approach us um, in whichever order that happens um, to ensure that we get that, that 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 is regularised. OK, any comments from transport? Or further comments from legal? Sorry, Chair, it's my tailor from Highways. Um, just really just to, to, to clarify, um, in respect of, of, from our point of view, obviously we appreciate Council Wheeler's concerns, um, but in terms of the access provision, the access itself offers an improvement to the ex existing access arrangement, and it's understood that the existing access could be utilised for, the, for you know, similar purposes. Um, for agricultural use anyway, with, with that element of retail, so that the, the existing access arrangements offers a benefit. OK, thank you. Um, any questions or comments from um, Councillor Wright? Yeah, just some of the uh, concerns about the uh, the bridge and the weight, weight limits on the bridge and the excess traffic that some of the um, objectors have mentioned. Uh, there's no concerns about those, the mic. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Um, it, the, the, the weight limit, there's a six tonne weight limit, structural weight limit on, on the bridge and, and that exists. Um, so obviously any access from that direction wouldn't be permitted for this site for, for larger vehicles. It's, it's not anticipated that any larger vehicles will be generated by the use. Um, and ultimately it's it's down to an issue of police enforcement to ensure that that weight limit is, um, is adhered to. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments from Councillor Barr? Uh, yes, uh, I'd like Mike Taylor's comment on Mrs Thompson's uh, concern about the uh, effect on the school uh, travel uh, to the neighbouring school. Uh, she, she feels that the new entrance would uh, discourage uh, children walking to school and would encourage more parents to take their, their children to school by car for safety reasons. Is that justified by the nature of the change in the access to the site? Um, thanks, Chair. And I, I, I would say not. What I would say is that the, the new access arrangements make that access point a lot more conspicuous than it currently is. Obviously, there's an access there at the moment, which has 
uh, restricted visibility to the southeast due to the adjacent boundary between the um, the, 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 the land in question and the, the, the third party land to the southeast. So the, the, the new access itself will be a lot more conspicuous and um, we're getting improvements in terms of the, the nature of it. Um, and as has been discussed, the fact that an access exists for agricultural use means there's an element of, of movement in and out of that. So, so we've not raised any highway concerns in respect of that. Thank you. Thank you, it's helpful. Um, and Councillor Carey. Thank you, Chair. Um, clearly, it's a very sensitive site, this one, and I think all my concerns have been addressed either in the report itself or in the additional comments from officers, so uh, I'm quite happy with the way it is. OK, thank you. We've had quite um, a bit of discussion, so I'll run through and see if any members have any additional comments or questions. Councillor Friend. Not, no, thank you, Chair. Councillor Morgan. Nothing further, Chair. Councillor Mundry. No questions or comments, Chair. Councillor Parrish. Chair, one of the objectors raised questions of uh, light and, and power. Section 927 of the report does say that would not need planning consent, but it does say a condition recommended to control the extent of external lighting measures. And I can say I've read it twice and I can't see such a condition. I think, I think it was mentioned in um, in some of the representations. Have you got any comments on that? Nick? Condition six, I've found it, sorry. Sorry. I've found it now, thank you. All right. Well done, I am. Um, going on then, um, any further comments from Councillor Wheeler? Um, sorry, Chair, I'm still not clear about the, um, the sale of trees from the site. Um, and I know Nikki mentioned um, de minimis sales. Um, does, I'm sorry, I am probably in a bit thick here. Does this mean that the applicant, if permission is granted, could begin to sell um, trees? And how would de minimis be applied? What's the threshold? Nikki? Thank you, Chair. There is it, it, there is no threshold as such. It's by nature. It's, it's very very minor. In, it, it's a very very minor in in nature, um, but there is no th threshold. It is fact in degree, so we would just need to keep an eye on this and make sure that it didn't um, exceed what we consider to be de minimis, which therefore is significant levels. Thank you. Okay. Um, can I ask if we did if we didn't include any condition about it. Sorry, all the way around. If we did include a condition banning sales, would that mean it could still have a de minimis um, element of sales anyway? Does that question make sense, Nikki? It, it does make sense and it's given me food, food, food for thought, to be honest with you, Councillor. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think so. there is no retail use proposed. So legally, um, if we could apply a condition that would prevent any retail from the site whatsoever. But again, it comes down to what the rationale for that would be in much the same way as the previous application. And ultimately, is it reasonable and where, where, would, where, where would the harm, where, where would the harm be demonstrated in that instance if it is just de minimis, which is very small nature? Chair, thank you. Chair, could mm -hmm. I, can I make a comment on that? My, my reason, um, would be highway safety because it is a difficult stretch of road. I appreciate that the access point is improved, but that doesn't take away from the fact that any cars turning in and out of this um, of this site are going to create highway problems. And I'm just thinking that, you know, come Christmas, everybody wants to sort of jump on the Christmas tree bandwagon um, because they're a good seller, aren't they? So, you know, there is the possibility there that there could be retail sales. Yeah. If I can come back on that, if you like, Chair. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so just in terms of I just speaking upon something that Mike said earlier regarding the highway access and it being de minimis. And in that regard, it's no different to the current situation. So it's currently agricultural and could potentially have that de minimis element associated with it. So there is no difference there. If at certain seasonal times of the year, for example, 
Christmas. Um, that was the primary function of this land is to import Christmas trees. It, my, my understanding is that is not what they're intending to sell here. Um, so they're intending to grow here. Um, if they were importing Christmas trees and selling them as the primary business, then that is no longer de minimis and therefore there, may, there would be a change of use. And if that was the case and it had been done unlawfully, our enforcement team would investigate further. Thank you. Um, so carrying on through, Councillor Wright. Have you any further questions or comments? No further questions or comments. Right. Um, any um, anybody else want to come back with any further comments? Um, are there any one, clarifications? One question. Yes, uh, sorry. Objectors, uh, have, some of the objectors have raised the issue that the trees have already been planted, so this is effectively a retrospective application. Would that tree planting have required planning permission or would that have simply been permitted on the site anyway? Okay. No, so under the agricultural use, the, the uh, tree nursery is permitted, so they've not needed any consent at all to plant those trees. Thank you. Any further clarifications from officers? Right, can I um, ask, is um, anyone ready to um, make a proposal? Um, Judith, would you like to make a proposal? Um, and I um, move approval of the um, application chair move approval of the applicant occasion as it stands with the conditions as they stand yeah yes chair yeah okay um can i ask if i have um a seconder councillor morgan would you like to second that i'll second it chair okay so that is proposed and seconded so um does anyone want to make any amendments OK, can I hand over then to um, Democratic Services to uh, take the vote? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Barr? Four. Councillor Carey? Four. Councillor Friend? Four. Councillor Grime? Four. Councillor Morgan? Four. Councillor Mundry? Four. Councillor Parrish? Four. Councillor Wheeler? Four. And Councillor Wright? Four. Thank you. Uh, application is approved. Right, thank you. So that's item three approved. We come on to item four, which is 2019 36095. That is three, the Limes, Colchester and Glazebury, Warrington, WA34HE. It's a proposed two-storey extension. Can I invite the development manager to present a report? Thank you, Councillor Grime. The application relates to a detached residential property in a distinctive residential area and proposes the remodelling of the house by, by means of a two-storey addition. The application is before members because it has been called in by Council Smith for reasons of design and residential immunity, as detailed in your update note. Culture and Glazebury Parish Council have objected to the proposal for similar reasons, but with specific regard to massing. Six responses were also received as a result of neighbour notification letters. Two of these were in support of the application and four objected on the basis of the impact on immunity. As members are aware, all planning applications must be determined in accordance with local planning policies unless other material considerations indicate otherwise. The relevant local planning policies are within the core strategy and are contained within section 7 of the report. The key issues associated with the development are the principle of the development, its impact on design character and residential immunity and highway safety. And I'll take each of these in turn. The application proposes an extension to a residential property for residential purposes and is therefore acceptable in principle subject to detailed assessment against funding policies. In order to fully consider the impact on the character of the host property and the wider street scene in this instance, it is important to understand the existing site characteristics. The application property has a staggered front elevation and could be described as, as chalet style with a two storey front gable and a pitched roof that projects from this along its width to a single storey element. The property is significantly set back within its plot as demonstrated on the location plan within your report and currently on screen. 
The neighbour to the north, number one, is a two storey property and that to the south, number five, is a bungalow. The majority of the properties within the street are individually designed, but there are key elements that ensure that the street is distinctive with a particular sense of place. This includes staggers in elevations, subordinate elements, roof shape and depth, materials and openness. The two storey addition would in effect wrap around the single storey element. The proposed side extension in the plans and photos section at the end of your report illustrates this well and would alter the roof shape of the widest elements of the house from mono pitched to dual pitched. Whilst there is a significant change in the character of the host dwelling, it does not look out of keeping with the wide, within the wider street scene where similar roof shapes are evident. The matting of the building equally is not considered out of keeping. The property retains a significant stagger in the front building line and this combined with the roof shape reduces any impacts of the matting of the building. Notwithstanding this, however, there are properties within the immediate, immediate street scene, such as that immediately to the north, that has a much greater mass and in close proximity to the highway. It is considered that pros mod proposed modifications to the application property are not comparable and would not result in an incongruous or dominant feature within the street scene. The extension is on a similar footprint to the original property and would not result in the overdevelopment of the site. The application has been assessed for potential impacts on the immunity of neighbouring properties. This is detailed within paragraphs 9.7 to 9.12 of your report and in the circulated update note with a specific regard to the property at the rear. Number five, the Limes, is a bungalow to the south of the application site and has the greatest potential for impact. There are habitable room windows in the side elevation of the neighbouring property, as, as can be seen within the photo in your report. There will be no direct interface with these windows as a result of the development, although the extension will be clearly visible. The pitch of the proposed roof would slope away from these windows, therefore minimising the impact of the extension. Although the extension would be 6.5 metres from the side elevation of the neighbouring property, this is actually unchanged from the current situation. Weight is also given to the fact that there is no direct interface and therefore the neighbouring window would retain an aspect and the presence of the fence along the shared boundary, which is directly in front of that window and some five metres away. Although the extension would form a side gable, there would be and will be taller, therefore, than the original property in this location. On balance, for the reasons stated, it is therefore considered that there will be no significant adverse impact on the amenity of this property. Particular consideration has also been given to the amenity of number 77 Common Lane to the rear of the application site, and your update note clarifies that the windows on this, to this property are the primary windows to the habitable rooms. Even so, there are, these are at an oblique angle, 16 metres away, and therefore it is considered that there will be no detrimental impact in terms of privacy overlooking and dominance as a result. There are 13 car parking spaces on site currently to meet with the requirements that the extra bedroom will create, and no conditions on this matter are therefore needed. The application is acceptable, considered acceptable in principle, and reflects and respects the character of the immediate built environment. There will be no significant adverse impacts on residential amenities as a result, and no impacts on highway safety. The application is therefore recommended for approval, subject to conditions. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Nikki. Um, I can confirm that we've received three additional representations. We have a sort of objection from Mr Wayne Price, objection from Culture and Glazebury Parish Council and objection from Mr and Mrs Hamnett. Um, will members please confirm that they have read and understood these um, representations? Um, Councillor Carey. Confirm, Chair. Councillor Friend. Confirm, Chair. Councillor Morgan. I can confirm, Chair. Councillor Mundry. I confirm, Chair. Councillor Parrish. Confirm. Councillor Wheeler. Yes, confirm, Chair. Councillor Wright. Confirm. Councillor Barr. Confirm. And I've read them as well. Um, I confirm also that these representations will be included in the minutes. So again, I'm going to ask members if they've got any questions or comments, um, questions to ask to the um, officers. Um, uh, Councillor Barr, have you got um, any questions or comments to make? Councillor Barr, can you switch on your mic? 
just a comment really that uh, I think that the officer's report has been has been very thorough and it comes down to to matter of aesthetics as to whether one believes that this fits the street scene uh, or not it, it happens to be my opinion that this uh, development would not be a detrimental within the area and, and looking at the directions uh, of all the windows and the additional uh, uh, gla glazing it is not at all clear to me that it would have a substantial impact on neighbors as some neighbours seem to think. Um, thank you. Um, any comments or questions from Councillor Carey? Not at this time, Chair. OK, Councillor Friend? Uh, not at this time, Chair, thank you. Councillor Morgan? Councillor Morgan, are you with us? I'll come back um, in a moment. Councillor Mondry, have you got any questions or comments? No questions or comments, Chair. OK, Councillor Parrish. Not at this time, no. Um, Councillor Wheeler. Uh, yes, Chair, um, on page 69 of the report, um, paragraph 9.5, um, if Nikki could just confirm that they are going to render the whole building white. Um, I know that the existing building could be rendered white under permitted development rights, but is the proposal to have the the whole building now rendered into white? Because that is going to make it quite dominant in the street scene and it's going to be a very large building as well. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so the yes, so the materials they're proposed do indicate that it will be all rendered white um, to all external walls. So that would be the case. Um, you'll notice from the photographs within the report that there are elements of that already within the building, albeit that the elements of brickwork as well. Um, it's not an incongruous material within the within the street scene. It is used elsewhere um, quite quite frequently within the street scene. As said, there the original building, so the building as is at the moment could be um, rendered without planning permission at the moment. And um, so it is just all uh, subsequently, if you, if you take it a step further, even if the building was constructed in brick, it could th then further to that be rendered sometime in the future. And um, we consider that to be acceptable. Um, the officers consider that to be acceptable without harmful impacts in, on the street scene and design character of the area, Chair. Thank you. Um, Councillor Wright, have you got any Comments or questions for officers? Uh, not the moment. OK, thank you. Um, Councillor Morgan, are you back with us? I'm back on now, Chair. I, uh, nothing to raise. OK, uh, did you hear the other questions and comments? Yes. OK, thank you. That's good. Um, can I just ask generally, has anyone got any further questions or comments? to uh, to make on this application. Um, are there any clarifications from officers that need to be made further? No, thank you, councillor. OK. Um, I'm uh, ready to make a proposal then that the um, application be approved. Um, Councillor Mondry, are you ready to second that application? Sorry, Councillor Mondry, can you hear us? Yes, I second, Chair. I second. Right, both. thank you. So that proposal is proposed and seconded. Are there any amendments? Thank you. So can we go to Democratic Services for the vote? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Barr? Four. Councillor Carey? Four. Councillor Friend? Four. Councillor Grime? Four. Councillor Morgan? Four. Councillor Mundry? Four. Councillor Parrish? Four. Councillor Wheeler? Four. 
And Councillor Wright. Four. Thank you. The application is approved. Thank you. So that's item four approved. We go on to item five. That's 2019 36194. One Grantham Avenue, Walton Warrington, WA 46PF. That's a proposed single story side extension, rear veranda, loft conversion with dormer windows, garage conversion and extension to provide an annex. Can I invite the development manager to present the report? Thank you, Councillor. The application is before members because it's been called in by Councillor Walker for reasons of character, impact on privacy and overbearing nature. In response to two rounds of publicity of the application, due to the submission of amended plans, a total of eight representations have been received, of which six have objected due to the impact of the development of the community, poor design that does not respect the host dwelling or that surrounding area, and displaced parking due to the siting of the extension. As members are aware, all planning applications must be determined in accordance with local planning policies unless other material considerations indicate otherwise. The relevant policies are contained within section seven of your report. The key issues associated with development are the principle of the development, the impact of design on design and character, residential immunity and highway safety, and I'll take each of these in turn. The application proposes an extension to residential property for residential purposes and is therefore acceptable in principle subject to a detailed assessment against planning policy. The application proposes a dormer extension to the rear roof plane, a dormer to the hipped roof, on the side elevation resulting in the continuation of the ridge line of the original roof and a small dormer to the front. Each of these elements are proportional within the space that they occupy and have pitched roofs to respect the character of the host dwelling. The host dwelling has a staggered front building line and both the front and side dormers will be set back, set back from that principal front elevation which would minimise its their visual impacts. There are other types of front dormers within the street scene albeit they relate to different property types. A veranda is proposed to the rear elevation with a solid roof supported with wooden posts and a projection some 1.9 metres. This is small scale and is considered to be in keeping with the host dwelling. The application also proposed an extension to the rear of the existing garage, which it is proposed would be converted, and a single storey beside rear extension to link the former garage to the main property. Each of these elements will be constructed of brick and tile, and roof lines would respect the, that of the original property. The additions are proportionate and the plot is of ample size to accommodate them. The application has been considered in terms of the potential impact on residential immunity. The application is at right angles to the neighbouring property in Belvoir Road and consideration has been given to the potential for overlooking and impacts on privacy for those residents, particularly from the proposed side dormer, which, unlike the ground floor additions, does not benefit from screening along the shared boundary. It is considered that any potential impacts of the dormer will be mitigated by obscure glazing. This is appropriate in any case given that it would serve an ensuite bathroom. Interface distances to the front and rear of the site would not be compromised by the, dormer, by the proposed dormers. The proposed single storey side and rear additions will be of an increased height compared to existing structures within a similar location, but the roof shape is pitched away from the rear gardens of the application properties so the neighbouring properties in order to minimise the impacts. Whilst a picture window is proposed in the side elevation of the application property closer than the existing, its impact is mitigated by ground level differences and increased screen and existing screen along the boundary. Whilst the proposal would be visible from the curtilage of the adjacent properties, it is considered that there would be no detrimental impacts as a result. A plan submitted with the application demonstrates how four car parking spaces could be accommodated within the curtilage of the dwelling. This is considered acceptable in order to offset the potential for on street car parking. If members were minded to approve this application, they may wish to consider an additional condition to ensure that the car parking is laid out and available prior to the first use of occupation of any extension. This, isn't, this condition is not currently included within your report. The additions are considered to be in keeping with the original dwelling and the character of the wider area and would not result in an adverse impact on the immunity of the neighbouring properties. On this basis, the application is recommended for approval subject to conditions, including that to ensure that sufficient car parking is laid out within the curtilage prior to the first occupation of any extension to be approved, as referred to earlier. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, I can confirm that we've received five additional representations. We have objections from Mr Matthew Barnes, from Mr Jonathan Clark, from Mr and Mrs Mountford, Mr and Mrs Lee 
and a representation from Councillor Peter Walker. Um, can all members confirm that they have read and understood these five representations? Um, Councillor Barr? Confirm. Councillor Carey? Confirm. Councillor Friend? Confirm. Councillor Morgan? Confirm. Councillor Mundry? Confirm. Councillor Parrish? Confirm. Councillor Wheeler? Councillor Wheeler, are you with us? Yes, confirmed, sorry. Thank you. Councillor Wright? Confirm. And I've read and understood them as well. Thank you. Confirm that these representations will be included in the minutes. So again, we will um, go through member by member and ask if you have any questions or comments, questions from the officers or um, comments. Starting this time with Councillor Mundry, have you got any comments or questions? No questions or comments, Chair. OK, Councillor Parrish. Chair, on page 101, I was just seeking clarification what the plans mean. We've got an attic plan and there's a, a long uh, bit into the existing gable at the north side. Um, just wonder whether that is just the existing roof space. And on page 102 opposite, we do have the uh, revised plan for car parking. Uh, that's obviously taking some of the garden. And I just wondered, can we condition that the new surface must be permeable? Uh, I think it's one of the problems of people concreting over gardens. And I just wondered whether that's within the possibilities to actually condition that the any new surface must be permeable. Nikki, have you got any comments or perhaps Mike? Yep, sure. Certainly, Mr. Um, Chair. In terms of the um, the um, plans are shown on page one hundred and one. Those those lines indicative. That's um, indicative. That illustrates the ground. So, so it's the plan on the right. I think Councillor Parish is referring to, and that's just the um, those lines show the roof shapes of the ground floor. Yes. So that's sorry. That's, that's not what I meant. At the on the parking. Oh, sorry, Chair. It was it was the, the the attic plan has got the rooms and it's got the stairwell with the gable, the new gable with the windows set set back. Yeah. Uh, but to the right of that, as we're looking at it, uh, there is a long uh, void. It looks like heading into the roof space to the um, the existing gable. I was just wondering whether it is just the existing roof space, which the that, that, that is Councillor Parish. that is just the existing roof space. OK, thank you. It goes into the gable, so it's a um, maximum um, height along there. And the other issue there that you've raised is to do with the permeable surfacing for the car parking. Yeah, if we if we consider that was a reasonable condition, we can add that in. We can make that a requisite. Sorry, just making a note. Sorry, Chair, can I just add to that as well? We we would request that it be a bound material low, so it wouldn't be gravel or anything like that, that they could carry on the highway. It would have to be, the conditions have to be worded so that the actual material is permeable, but bound. Thank you. Um, right, carrying on. Any comments from Councillor Wheeler or questions for officers? Um, yes, Chair. Um, Number one and three Grantham Avenue are uh, at currently a um, totally symmetrical pair of houses. Um, and I think members, we went on a visit to Grantham Avenue fairly recently to look at a garden development. So I think members may be aware of um, how lovely these mature semi detached and detached houses are. Uh, and I think this totally alters the street scene. Um, in a way that for me is not acceptable. It's a big, big development and to introduce a three storey element um, is just out of keeping, particularly with its relation to, to number three. OK, thank you. Any comments or questions from Councillor Wright? Uh, no. no, not at this moment. OK, any comments or questions for officers from Councillor Barr? 
Um, no, I, I'd say, like to say that I have some sympathy with uh, Councillor Wheeler's view about the uh, scale of the proposal. Uh, it, it simply does not strike me as being in keeping with the other properties is on the road. It, it looks as though it's to be maximising the opportunity uh, to uh, enlarge the property. Thank you. Any comments from or questions from Councillor Carey? Yes, Chair, I, I agree. I, I don't like the um, the way the symmetry with number three has been destroyed by this uh, proposal. It's going to be a lopsided uh, appearance. Um, the scale of it is is also a little bit of a concern, uh, especially with the way the car parking has been squeezed into the yeah. small space at the front. Uh, and one final point is, um, I wonder if it's possible to put a condition on the annex to state that it should always be an ancillary part of the main residence so that there's no future um, possibility of that being sold off and the car parking become more of a conflict. Um, OK, are there any comments from officers on Councillor Carey's points? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple of things there to, put, to pick up on. One of one of the issues raised there was about the symmetry between the two properties, mm -hmm. and I think in, in terms of of that particular point, it's important to note what is re what is possible under PD, and under permitted development, you can create a hip to gable, so they could create um, kind of that that roof shape or to to a larger extent even without planning permission. So that's one thing to note. And the other thing to do uh, was about the condition to record, ensure that the annex is not used as a self-contained unit. Um, that, that's, um, that's implicit within the use. So if they were to subdivide that annex into a, a self-contained unit in the future, that would need separate consent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what are we up to? Yes, Councillor Fran, have you got any... Um, Questions or comments? None at this time, Chair. Thank you. OK, Councillor Morgan, have you got I any? I now, Chair. The questions I would have raised have just been answered by Nikki. OK, thank you uh, very much. Well, there's a certain amount of discussion there, so I will go through again and ask if there are any further comments that anyone would like to make. Councillor Mundry? No comments, Chair. OK, Councillor Parrish? Yes, Chair, uh, on the business of uh, extensions, which were in the symmetry, uh, some of the objectors have, have raised the fact that the dormer, um, well, the officers have said the dormers at number five and seven, um, uh, but they're part, of the and they're part of the original design. I I'm not too worried about a precedent on this building because the dormer facing the road would be uh, fairly well set back. Um, I'd be more worried about there's, there's an extension to number five, uh, I think, anyway. Um, but um, I'd, I'd hate to think you could ruin the uh, sort of arts and craft frontage of number five and seven by setting a precedent for this. Uh, I know everything, every case on its merits, but it was just a, on a principal question. It's all in the eye of the beholder. Uh, does the design actually have an impact on whether a precedent is set in these sorts of circumstances? Okay, any comments, um, officers? It, it, it comes down to the uh, to the fact really that each application needs to be taken on its own merits. Yes. So the fact that they the other properties within the loc the uh, the wider location there do have dormers doesn't necessarily set a precedent here. Although this although we would it, it is material to this to the decision. It is a characteristic within um, within the street scene within this location. If those other properties were come, going to come in. Um, to example, increase the, the size of the dormer. Again, we would need to take that on, on its own merits in consideration of that particular application site. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and can I just chair, if I may, sure. um, in terms of future, I know the government has produced this planning for the future white paper, um, and I, I, I've flagged up what that actually means because one of the proposals will be to allow houses to be extended upwards. Uh, from what's in the white paper, it's a bit vague. Um, some of the reports have suggested that's just for apartment blocks, but I just wondered whether the officers had got any more guidance on uh, if the government, what the intention is in withdrawing 
in allowing permitted developments, right? So houses can be extended upwards. Well, it, um, it wouldn't apply at the moment, of course, but do, do officers wish to, to comment on that question? Yes, thank you, Councillor. As, as you just stated there, Councillor, it's not material to this decision, um, but in answer to the question, we don't have any additional information at the moment, but once we get something, we will circulate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any further comments or questions from Councillor Wright? Um, I just think that when, when we take each um, application, it's all merits. Uh, when we look at an application further down the line for another property near to one that we've taken on those merits, we then take into consideration what we've done to the one before, don't we? That has yes. an impact. So it's, I, I, I always feel uncomfortable about that sort of, um, I understand it. Um, but I, I got the symmetry bit. Um, I'm worried about that and the, the massing. Uh, let's see what anybody else says. And the car parking. I just think, you know, that it's, it's the type, you know, the spaces, the way they're laid out seem very strange, but I suppose that's how it has to be. Councillor Carey, any further comments? No, oh, Chair. Um, Councillor Friend? Uh, no, Chair. You've already been to me, I think. Yes, yeah, so I'm going round again. <laughs> um, Councillor Morgan? Nothing further. further comments? No. Nothing further. Okay. Does anybody else want to make any further comments or uh, questions? Yes, please. So, so several councillors and Councillor Carey started to uh, raise the issue of the layout of the car parking spaces. Can I ask the transport officer whether that layout can be genuinely treated as parking for four cars? Because it appears from the way that the cars are laid out that uh, firstly, you'll have to have extremely skilled people at parking. And secondly, the sequence of no, bringing vehicles true. in and bringing vehicles out will be completely fixed by the layout of the parking. That doesn't look to me like four parking spaces. Right, Taylor. Th thanks, Chair. Um, no, I appreciate that, that Councillor, and you, there are doubts as whether you could actually negotiate vehicles into the positions that they've shown, but our parking standards require three parking spaces, uh, and we're satisfied that three vehicles can be accessed on that, within that arrangement. And um, what I would say is the the existing parking isn't ideal because it relies on a single drive of tandem parking for three vehicles up to the garage. So in, in some respects, if there were, say, if there was two vehicles parked on this site, you know, you, you, you could at least get one off while another one's still parked without having to manoeuvre the first vehicle out of the way. OK, thank you. Um, any further comments from Members, uh, just to move the uh, condition on the uh, surface of the of additional car parking. Bound Sorry, the permeable surface. I've not quite understood you. To remove the condition on the. No. To add a condition. To that add the, the condition of the on the surface. Be yes. Permeable yes. but bound or whatever yes, phraseology uh, I always want. Sorry, I'd uh, not quite uh, caught that. Um, Chair? Comments, yes. Uh, any clarifications from Chair. officers? Oh, Chair. sorry. You. Sorry, Judith. Sorry, yeah. No, just that my, my concerns still remain that um, despite what may, may be allowed in extending the property in terms of permitted development rights, there is a big difference between that and this la this this um this extension, um, which is totally out of keeping with the area. And I, I have concerns about the parking because I think I raised it at last committee. Um, I just don't like the idea of everybody turning their front go gardens over to car parks, which is what we seem to be doing. And this certainly, um, the way the parking arrangements as proposed will be significantly different from most of the ones in the rest of the road from what i can remember on going down this road recently thank you thank you any further comments from members any clarifications from officers Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to come back on Councillor Parrish's point regarding the um, permeability of the service in the car parking area. I, when I when I 
provided my advice previously, I did say there would need to be a reason associated with that. Now, in this particular instance, there are no known flooding issues, um, and therefore it would usually be acceptable to um, allow those to um, to drain, to, to fall to a drain, With but obviously the, the um, driveway would need to have the correct fall to enable that to happen. We do have a standard condition that can address both those points, so either to re require the, a permeable surface or um, sufficiently drained, and it would be my suggestion that we employ that condition in this instance. Thank you. Can I? Go on, <laughs> hopefully, go on, can, Steve. hopefully, can drain it to their own garden then. Pardon? It, it would hopefully need. It would lay, lay it with a fall into the garden, or what's left of the garden. Nikki. So our highways engineers would be involved in the response to that to make sure that it didn't result in any, any flooding issues. OK, thank you. Um, right, well, I think we've given that a thorough airing. Um, lots of um, points have been raised, lots of uh, concerns. Um, can I ask, um, Judith, would you like to make a proposal? I chair would move um, refusal on the grounds of residential amenity, overdevelopment and impact on the street scene. Is anyone prepared to second that proposal? Um, Bob, you've said something, but I couldn't hear you. Can Sorry. you I, 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 I muted myself rather than unmuted myself. I will second that proposal. OK, that uh, proposal is um, made and seconded. Um, any comments on the reasons um, from legal. OK, have we, have we got those reasons written down? I haven't, I'm afraid, Councillor. Can um, Councillor Wheeler will repeat those, please? Um, overdevelopment of the site, impact on residential amenity and impact on the street scene. <clears throat> All right, so we have a proposal and seconder to turn down the application. Does anyone want to make any amendments to that proposal? I presume I can't negative it. <laughs> no. <laughs> OK, can we uh, You have to wait for the vote? Can we go to uh, Democratic Services then for the vote? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Barr? I vote for refusal. Thank you. Councillor Carey? For refusal. Councillor Friend? Against. Councillor Grime? Um, for refusal. Councillor Morgan? For refusal. Councillor Mundry? For refusal. Councillor Parrish. Against refusal. Councillor Wheeler. For refusal. And Councillor Wright. Uh, for refusal. Applications refused. Right, thank you. So item five is refused. Um, going on to item six, this is 26328, 127 Vulcan Clothes, Poulton with Fernhead, Warrington WA2 OHW. Proposed change of use of land to form part of a residential curtilage, an extension to an existing conservatory. This is a resubmission of 2019 35218 with the summer house omitted. Can I invite the development manager to report? Thank you, Councillor. The application proposes the change of use of the land adjacent to 127 Vulcan Close to form private garden area and a rear conservatory to replace the existing. The vacant land to the side of the existing curtilage of the application property is largely inaccessible to local residents and there is no access from private gardens and as can be seen within the photographs within section 12 of your report, the area has been subject to fly tipping. The area is currently owned by Golden Gates Housing Trust. 
Members may recall that a similar application was considered late last year, but included a detached summer house. The application was subsequently refused by Development Management Committee because of the siting and design of the summer house and the potential impact on trees resulting from the summer house. The current application no longer proposes the summer house, but all other elements of the proposal reflect that of the previous application. The application is before committee due to an objection received from Councillor Friend regarding access and maintenance of boundaries by the neighbouring properties. I just reiterate there just um, as Councillor Friend on Development Management Committee pointed out earlier, it, that doesn't refer to him. Two objections have also been received from local residents on the basis of access and maintenance. Three letters in support of the proposal have been received on the basis that it is currently unsightly and would stop the congregation of youths and fly tipping. The key issues with associated with development are the principle of development, the impact of design and character, residential immunity and trees and ecology and I'll take each of these in turn. The application proposes a change of use of the land to garden space and extension to the associated house. The application site is within an area primarily characterised by its residential nature and it is recognised that the land subject to the change of use has no amenity value currently and could actually be described as detracting from such based on evidence of fly tipping. The proposals are therefore considered acceptable in principle subject to conditions. The land subject to the change of use appears to have originally been part of the Vulcan Close development. It was transferred over to Golden Gates from the, from the council. Originally there were garages to the front of this area of land and at, at a right angle to the application property, although these have since been demolished and replaced with open parking. There is no functionality to the space and based on observations and representations it is misused. Allowing this to be brought within the garden of the dwelling would not therefore be harmful to the character of the area. Similarly, the proposed conservatory with a projection of just 3.3 metres extending along the entire width of the rear of the host property is suitable within its context in terms of scale and character. Given the limited projection of the conservatory and its materials, it would not impact adversely on the immunity of the attached neighbour. Whilst in principle, the proposed change of use would bring benefits in terms of antisocial behaviour issues associated with the current arrangement. It is noted that concern has been raised over continued access for maintenance purposes for existing adjacent enclosures to those properties on Cinnamon Lane. It is not known whether those properties currently have a right of access, but even if this was the case, it would not be material to this decision and would still be a matter for the landowners to resolve. There will be no loss or harm to trees as a result of the proposal, protected or otherwise, and a condition and informative is attached to ensure um, no harm to local ecology in line with the recommendations of the Greater Manchester Ecology Unit. On this basis, the application is considered acceptable in accordance with local planning policy and is therefore recommended for approval subject to other plan policies. Thank you, Chair. Chair? Chair? Sorry? Chair, can I just, um, um, when this last came, to um, commit to, I was an employee of Golden Gates Housing Trust and I took yeah. no part. I'm no longer an employee of Golden Gates Housing Trust. So that declaration no longer exists. So am I okay to carry on? Um, this list? Paul Crispy. Paul, can you confirm that um, Councillor Steve Wright is, is OK to to continue with the discussion of this item. Um, well, is um, does, he, does Councillor Wright still have an interest in the company uh, at all? No, I was um, employed. I no longer no longer have an interest. Yeah. But last time this came, yeah. I was. Yeah. But no longer. That's yeah, I mean, as long as you don't have a current uh, interest that uh, you're entitled to take part, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Presumably Thank that's you. on the basis that we understand, sorry, is that on the understanding, is the land owned by um, Golden Gate? In part? I think it, it was because Golden Gates was mentioned at the last right. meeting. I, I declared an interest because I worked and I was excused from the meeting. Yeah. I, I think, think you told us the land, for the land, 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 land owned owned too, by didn't you, Nikki? Course. Sorry, what was that, Councillor? Uh, just tell us who the land belonged to. Yes, so it's, it's Golden Gates. All right. I, I know there was some concern from members regarding um, not being able to see the site fully. I have got some additional photographs. Um, I've just displayed those on screen now for information. So that's the um, photograph to the rear of the application property. There's a, a footpath there to the front of those houses, which seems um, it can have a look on your plan. So can we have that made bigger? It's I've got it very small on my screen at the moment. I don't know about 
everyone else. If you click on the image, then it'll come up on the main screen. Thank you. These experts. <laughs> So that is, um, if you look at the, the application on page 107, the um, your site location plan there, that is to the rear of, of, of 127. And as you can see, that yeah. walkway there just heads to, to nowhere. Um, that's the clear garages site to the um, front of the application property. And to the right there, you can see the application property. And there's the application property in a little bit more detail there. OK, thank you very much. Um, right, I can confirm that we've had one representation on this application. That's from the applicant, Ms Sheen. Um, we've had no additional objections. Can uh, all members confirm that they've read and understood that representation? Um, Councillor Barr. I have read and understood the uh, representation. OK, Councillor Carey. Confirmed. Friend, Councillor Friend. Confirmed. Councillor Morgan. Confirmed. Councillor Mundry. Confirmed. Councillor Parrish. <coughs> Councillor Parrish, are you with us? I am. Confirmed. Councillor Wheeler. Confirmed. Councillor Wright. Confirm. And I've also read and understood and I confirm that the representation will also go into the minutes. I'll now ask members if they've got any questions from to officers or comments. Can we start with um, Councillor Parrish this time? I've got no concerns at all. Thank you. Councillor Wheeler. Um, no, Chair, no concerns at this time, no. OK, Councillor Wright. No concerns. OK, Councillor Barr. Uh, no concerns, and I note that this application has been amended from the one that was before us before, and the, the problems with the other one have been removed. Yes, Councillor Carey. No concerns, Chair. Right, Councillor Friend. Uh, no concerns, Chair. Councillor Morgan. No concern. Councillor no Mundry. Councillor Mundry. No concerns, Chair. Thank you. Um, are there any clarifications from um, officers? Anything further needed? No, thank you, Councillor Grime. Right, I will um, propose then that the application is approved. Um, is anyone prepared to second that application? Councillor Parrish? I'll second that, Chair. Thank you. So the motion to approve the application is proposed and seconded. Does anyone want to bring up any amendments? OK, can we then go to Democratic Services for the vote? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Barr? For. Councillor Carey. Oh. Hello. Hello, sorry. Councillor Friend. <laughs> sorry, I can't hear anybody. Councillor Friend, how do you wish to vote? For. Thank you. Councillor Grime. For. Councillor Morgan. For. Councillor Mundry. For Councillor Parrish. For Councillor Wheeler. For and Councillor Wright. For thank you. That application is approved. Thank you very much. Right, that's all the um, planning applications we have to deal with this evening, but we still have one more item on the agenda. Attached to your agenda is a report giving you information on appeal decisions over the past year and the procedure to be followed in reporting information regarding appeals in future. Um, this is on page seven of your agenda document with the title Appeal Decisions 
summer rate for 2019-2020 and future reporting procedures. We're going to have the opportunity for questions and clarifications. Then we will make a proposal to accept the report or the usual alternatives. Please note that if you vote to accept the report, you are also including that we will continue to get information on appeal decisions in the way that has been presented in this particular report, rather than the rather ad hoc way we've had such information over the past um, few years. So assuming that you have read the um, report. Chair, Councillor Friend here, I haven't received this report. I've not seen it before. It's attached it's to again. your agenda document. The agenda document that came round, do you have it by post or online? Uh, mine was downloaded, I got a link and mine's online and downloaded off the council website. And um, that... No hard copy was received. Okay, so that um, should have had about 31 pages of which um, the last ones were all this um, this report. Can you um, have you got the opportunity to check if it is there? Or are you sure that it wasn't? It's not on my copy chair. Right. Um, can I ask if any other members of the committee have um, not received the report? Um, so it's just Councillor Friend. Could I ask Nikki? I mean, the main picture is the one that we've got at the moment up on the screen. Can you see that, Councillor Friend? With the two pie charts? Yes, I can, yeah. Yeah. And this is backed up by um, the actual numbers and a re brief report from each um, application over the past year, 2019, and so far in 2020. Um, a brief summary of each and some full details of appeal decisions presented by inspectors. Um, with that comment, do you think you'll be able to make um, a decision on whether to accept this report or do you want us to defer it until the next meeting? It's, it's OK, friend. Chair, I'll, I'll just sit this one out and I'll, okay. I have faith in the other members. OK, can I confirm with um, Paul Clisby that this um, is acceptable? Yes, the uh, the members entitled to um, to sit sit an item out. OK, thank you. We'll um, go on with the. Um, with the matter then, so any further questions or comments from Councillor Barr? Uh. No further comments uh, other than praise for the layout of the report. I think this is a much clearer way of reporting uh, appeals to us, and it is important that we should uh, see what's happening to our decisions. Thank you. Councillor Morgan. Councillor Morgan. No questions, I'm happy with it. All right, Councillor Carey. Uh, yes, Chair, um, much better uh, presentation of information. I would suggest, though, that um, we have these reports quarterly in future. Right, that's, um, we can put as part of the... Um, Chair, it says in the report within each, reporting within each committee period, what does that mean? Um, every meeting. Nikki, can you um, answer yes, that you. question? Yeah, thank you, Councillor Bryan. So the intention um, was for for 
um, committee for appeal decisions um, to report be reported to members at the, the, the next opportunity after they're re received. So in effect, every meeting. Yeah, so in effect, you would receive you, the appeal decisions. Um, so those ones are at the back of the report at every meeting. So once you receive, um, once we receive a, an appeal decision, it would then be forwarded to democratic services to be put within your agenda packs. Now that is just for your general information. If you wanted then to speak, um, to ask any queries, if you've got any queries on those at the next meeting, well, we could run through that. Otherwise it can just be noted and, and just read at your leisure. Okay, Councillor Carey, would you be happy with that? Uh, no, Chair, I'd rather not have them at every meeting. Okay, well, that's something we can uh, bring to the vote uh, later. Um, I think I'm up to Councillor Mundry. Any comments or questions? No, I've not got any comments or questions. Okay, Councillor Parish. Uh, I'm happy with having it every meeting as swiftly as we can. And I'd like to know which decision has been appealed even before they get to appeal. But uh, the other <laughs> question I'd have is uh, whether we've actually had to pay costs on any for unreasonable decisions. Um, have you got that information to hand, um, Nikki? I haven't got that information to hand, but I can source that information and forward it out to members if they'd like. Yeah. Um, Councillor Wright. If you any comments or questions. Yeah, I understand what, where Peter's coming from, but I think if we're going to get them on a regular basis, it's probably more manageable to read rather than get three months all in one go. So I think I think I'd favour a more a little bit more frequently than every three months. Okay. Are there any further comments or questions from any members? Uh, yeah, I'd like to make an additional comment, if I may, uh, Chair. Uh, I'm also in favour of them coming to every meeting. And I think the reason they should come to every meeting is that if something's gone to appeal, uh, then our decision is being challenged and we may have to learn from that. And I think we should learn from that as quickly as possible. Uh, and uh, I'd assumed that, that no costs have been awarded because they weren't in the table, but perhaps there ought to be uh, something in the table that says where the costs have been awarded. OK. Chair. Um, further comments? Yes, Chair. Judith? Yeah, um, no, I I find these very, very useful. Um, and I'd be quite happy with them at every committee meeting. Just going back to Councillor Parrish's comment that often you don't know if we have turned an application down, we don't know if the applicant has gone to appeal. And I often find in my own ward, I don't know, I don't know this until a lot later down the line. Um, and I, I actually find it very useful to know what has been appealed. And I don't know if there's a mechanism within planning to, to let us know. And it doesn't have to be in our ward. It would, it would be anything, I suppose, that comes before. It gets complicated, doesn't it? Because that could be delegated decisions as well as decisions that are voted on at committee. OK, uh, Nikki, would you like to make any comment? What what we could do is um, on, a, on a rolling programme, if it was in, if it was agreed that this will be coming towards to, to members every every um, session we could just put a table together which details those applications delegated or dmc that have been subject to appeal just in a summary table of what they are um and then once we get those decisions once those decisions are received then obviously we include the inspector's letter within within your agenda packs as well thank you yeah um are there any further questions from uh, members of the committee any further comments? Right, I have a, a question to um, to Paul, Paul Clisby. Um, when we have um, made motions to accept a report, usually the report is either accepted or rejected, um, but members have, have made comments. Is it possible to take amendments to um, a proposal to accept? Yes, yeah, obviously you can um, you can approve it um, and then 
obviously make a, a request or a statement or a, a resolution to for some action. Right, right. so what does that come as an amendment? Or afterwards? Uh, well, Chair, I mean, obviously, it's strictly speaking, it's not been moved, has it, uh, to not be yet, noted? No, so, uh, so you just, you just to move. <laughs> yeah. So you just, you just move it with the uh, addition that you that you want. Um, okay. If you can get a seconder. <laughs> yeah. um, so I will um, propose that um, we accept the report and that future appeal decisions will be presented to the DMC committee in this format and I'm including in the proposal that we get that information each meeting and also whether there have been any costs involved. Yeah. Um, is anyone prepared to second that? I'm happy to second that. Sorry, I was just going to ask Councillor Wheeler, it's her turn. Do you want to second that? Yeah, I'm happy to second that, Chair. Okay, so that's proposed and seconded. Does anyone want to make an amendment? Not for me, Chair. Okay, can we go to the vote then to Democratic Services? Thank you, Chair. Uh, Councillor Barr? Four. Councillor Carey? Four. Uh, Councillor Grime? Four. Councillor Morgan? Four. Councillor Mundry. Four. Councillor Parrish. Four. Uh, Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Wright. Four. Um, uh, have you asked Councillor Friend? No. Sorry, Chair. Uh, Councillor Friend. I, I was sitting this one out, Chair. Abstain. Oh, sorry. You're quite right. I beg your pardon. Yes, sorry. <laughs> How can I remember? Can't forget be done as abstaining. Okay. Yes. So the uh, items approved. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. So that concludes the business for the meeting. Thank you very much for your attendance and hard work. That's members and officers as well. And I hope everyone continues to keep well and look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. 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 Thank you for very clear advice, Nikki. Oh, thank, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Bye.